Before you begin, dear reader, before you begin this chronicle, you should know that Biff, Chip, Kipper, and friends are training to be time runners. They are based in the time vault, a place that exists outside time. Their mission is to travel back in time to defeat the Virons. Virons are dark energy in human form. Their aim is to destroy history and so bring chaos to the future. The time runners have to be brave and self-reliant. They have a zap trap, which is a device to capture the Virons. They also have a link, which is a bit like a mobile phone disguised as a yo-yo. The link lets them communicate with the time vault. Apart from that, when on a mission, they are very much on their own. Theodore Mortlock, Time Guardian. The Senate Building, Rome, 44 BC. Rome didn't have a king. Instead, Roman citizens voted for two councils of leaders called the Assembly and the Senate. It was their job to discuss important issues and make laws. Chapter 1 Chip couldn't sleep. Living in the time vault was exciting enough, but now they had started training to fight the Virons, there was so much to learn as well. <sighs> With a sigh, he sat up and flicked a switch. The lights in his sleeping pod glowed. He picked up his training manual and began to read. As he read, Chip held the communication link in his hand. He couldn't wait to use it for real. He couldn't wait to become a time runner. Chapter 2 The day's training began in the laboratory. You look half asleep, said Nina as Chip shuffled in, late. At least he's got up, said Wilf, closing his locker. Tyler must still be in bed. At that moment, the door burst open. It was Mortlock. Behind him, something zoomed into the room. Tyler! Everyone gasped. And his new techno chair, announced Mortlock. Tyler turned suddenly and then skidded to a stop. Do you like it? He grinned. Mortlock built it. Now I'll be able to do anything you lot can. And a lot more, smiled Mortlock. Impressive, said Nadine. Everyone gathered around Tyler. Chip looked at the control panels on the chair. What does this one do? He asked, pushing one of the buttons. No! Yelled Tyler. But it was too late. Tyler shot backwards and slammed into the lockers. Immediately, the chair lurched forward. Whoa! Giggled Tyler. Stop! They all laughed at the sight of Tyler zipping wildly across the laboratory. But suddenly, the laughing stopped. Tyler was heading straight for the vat where the captured Byrons were held. They held their breath as he plowed into the side of the vat with a loud crash. The glass vat shuddered. The black matter stirred, sparking and hissing angrily inside the glass chamber. Everyone rushed to help Tyler. Even behind the glass, those Virons are scary, Tyler said in a shaky voice. The vat slowly settled with a quiet hiss. Mortlock quickly checked it. It seems all right, he said. No harm done, but we must be careful near the vat. Chapter 3 
The training carried on all day. There was a lot to learn about the link. As he listened, Nadim flicked up the secret lid and studied the tiny screen and keyboard. But Tyler couldn't concentrate. He tried to listen to Mortlock, but something was bothering him. He kept thinking about the Virons and how frightening they were. Finally, Mortlock said, So remember, with the link you'll be able to talk to the Time Vault when you are on a mission. The link also sends and receives text downloads. He looked around the room. Any questions? Tyler put up his hand. I'm worried. We can't use the link to protect ourselves against virons, can we? He asked. We've been lucky so far, but we won't always be. The others agreed. Yeah, said Nadim. I mean, how are we supposed to trap them and bring them back? Mortlock nodded thoughtfully. It's time to show you, he said. Let's go. No one had noticed, but all this time the Viren Vat had continued to hiss quietly. Something was not right. Chapter 4 Everyone followed Mortlock into the library. At the far end, he stopped and pulled a large book away from the shelf. Immediately, the whole bookcase juddered and then slid inwards like giant doors. Beyond the bookcase was a dark space. Mortlock stepped into the darkness. Lights blinked on to reveal a large room. The bookcase doors closed behind them. This is the control center, said Mortlock. In the center of the space on a desk was the time web. Its mass of glowing threads shimmered gently. In front of it was the matrix, and beside it was a globe that glowed with a faint light. Mortlock pointed at the open tubes that dropped into the space. They were chutes. He explained that they were connected to the sleeping pods. With these, you can get here in seconds, smiled Mortlock. So that's what the chutes are, grinned Wilma. Cool. Next, Mortlock slid open a drawer in the desk. He took out a silver ball and held it up. This is a zap trap, he said. They are used to catch virons. Mortlock began to explain how they worked. But Chip's mind wandered. It had been a long day. Sleep. The thought of it made him yawn. Mortlock stopped talking. He smiled at Chip. Perhaps we should all get some rest. It's been a long day. Mortlock began to hand out zap traps. Tomorrow I'll show you how they work. For now, take them with you and get used to them. Look at the section on zap traps in your manuals. Meanwhile, back in the laboratory, the Viren Vat continued to hiss. Chapter 5 Even though Chip was tired, he still couldn't sleep, so he lay in bed reading. Eventually, he fell asleep still holding the manual. A voice jolted Chip from his deep sleep. Chip took control immediately. It barked. It came from the speaker in his pod. He had overslept. He was late for training again. Chip scrambled to the chute. He hadn't used it before. Here goes, he thought, and he launched himself down it. He landed with a loud thud in control. So glad you could join us, laughed Mortlock. But something was wrong. Chip was in pain. He had twisted his ankle. You'd better rest it, said Biff. Here, Chip. I'll give you a lift back to your pod, said Tyler. 
Hop on! Chip climbed onto the techno chair, and Tyler spun it round. But as they headed out to the library, there was a grinding sound. Smoke billowed from under the chair, and it stopped suddenly. <laughs> oh, no! said Tyler. Mortlock studied the techno chair's motor. It may take time to fix, he tutted. I'm sorry, said Tyler. It must have been damaged when I crashed into the vat. Don't worry, smiled Mortlock. I'll push Chip back to his pod. Then I'll take the chair to my workshop and try to fix it. The rest of you stay here. Use the time to study the time web. He pushed Chip out into the library, and the bookcase doors closed behind them. Chapter 6 They looked at the time web in silence. It's like a map, Wilma suddenly said. A giant map of history. Every point of light is a moment from the past. Every moment affects the next right up to the present, added Nina. The time web stirred. A point of light suddenly turned black sending a pulse of darkness towards the edge of the web. They watched in horror. Is it a Viren attack? Asked Kipper. Now what do we do? Tyler tried to call Mortlock on his link, but there was no answer. We have to do something, said Biff. Tyler peered into the globe next to the Matrix. Ancient Rome, 44 BC. The Virens must be attacking, he gasped. You have to go now. I'll stay on control. They stepped into the portal, and in a few head-spinning seconds, they had arrived. Within a moment, Tyler had contacted them on the link. What can you see? Wilma whispered into her link. Early morning, a quiet street. Tall buildings like blocks of flats. A large marble building with tall columns covered in scaffolding. Looks like it's being rebuilt, added Biff. Tyler had done some research in the library. It's the Senate building, he said. In 44 BC, the Senate was closed for repairs. What's the Senate? asked Kipper. It's where the Roman government, the senators, met, said Tyler. He quickly looked in a book. Oh, no! What is it? asked Nina. 44 BC is when the leader, Julius Caesar, was assassinated by some of the senators. At that moment, a man turned into the street and walked quickly toward the Senate. Wait! whispered Nadim. He looks important. He's wearing a... Um, he hesitated. A toga, interrupted Wealth. We did this at school. <gasps> he could be Julius Caesar, gasped Kipper. Possibly, said Tyler, but it is more likely that he might be a senator. Suddenly, from the shadows, a rough man leapt forward and dashed after the senator. <sighs> He's going to attack him gasped Biff. Supposing he's a Viren, what if that man is Julius Caesar? I'll use my zap trap. Wait, said Tyler. You have to be sure it's a Viren. You must not get involved otherwise. Just wait. Chapter 7 Chip woke with a start. Over the pod speaker, he could hear Floppy barking. He hobbled down the slope to level one. It sounded as if Floppy was in the library. Why hadn't the others heard him? As he pulled open the library door, his blood froze. He saw a swirling mass of darkness. It was ripping the library to pieces. It could only be a Viren. It must have escaped from the vat in the laboratory. Meanwhile, back in ancient Rome, 
We must stop him, said Nina, before it's too late. The rough man caught up with the senator and grabbed hold of him. He has to be a Byron, cried Biff. She held up her zap trap. Tyler, answer me. I'm going to launch it. But we have to be sure, gasped Wolf. Biff held her breath. I've got one chance, she thought. At the same time, in the time vault, as fast as he could, Chip limped back up to his pod. He had to think quickly. He spoke into his link. Is anyone there? Tyler answered. Chip, I'm at control. We've had an emergency and... Chip interrupted him. There's a Byron in the library. It must be trying to get into control. Are you all safe? Can the Byron get to you? Tyler was scared. He had locked the bookcase door, but on the other side he could hear crashing sounds. If the Viren got in, they were finished. The Viren would destroy the time web. From the library came a loud thud. The bookcase doors shook. Tyler spoke to Chip urgently. Uh, I can't move quickly without my chair. The others are out in the time web. I don't know where Mortlock is. Call them back, yelled Chip. Now! Back in ancient Rome. Just as Biff was about to throw her zap trap, the rough man pulled the senator backwards. From the roof of the Senate, a huge block of stone crashed to the street where the senator had been a second earlier. The man had saved the senator's life. Biff and others had got it wrong. Nadim looked up at the roof. A shadowy figure stared back. Viren! Nadim shouted. Biff threw her zap trap. <coughs> Everyone's link buzzed. It was Tyler. Emergency! Get back now! He said. Chapter 8 Chip could hear the crashing below his pod. It was getting louder and more frantic. He hadn't been able to contact Mortlock either. Suddenly, Tyler's voice burst from Chip's link. I've called them back, but maybe it's too late. I think the Viren's about to break through. Oh no, it's... Then silence. Chip clasped his zap trap. I've got one chance, he thought, and he threw himself down the chute. Ugh. He hit the ground hard. His bad leg buckled under him. Out of the corner of his eye, he glimpsed the Viren. He launched his zap trap as he fell. As it flew, it opened up and released a bolt of plasma. Instantly, the Viren froze. It was sucked into the trap, which snapped shut. Your history! Chip screamed. Chip had fainted with pain. He came round and saw everyone looking down at him. Mortlock held Chip's zap trap, which had trapped the Viren. He smiled gently. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you, he said. But I had to deal with the vat. It must have been damaged by Tyler's chair. There were other Virens trying to escape from it. Mortlock took Biff's zap trap. But you dealt with it. Well done. You've just proved you are ready to be Time Runners. Tyler's Mission Report Location Ancient Rome Date 15th March 44 BC Mission Status Open and unfinished. Viren status. Biff and Chip zapped two Virens. Notes. Time runner training completed. One of the hardest things to learn is how to judge a situation. Things can look very different depending on your point of view. The way you see something might not be the only way to look at it. Good job Biff didn't throw her zap trap at the man she thought was attacking the senator. She hadn't seen that he was actually trying to save the senator. 
the trick is not to make your mind too quickly. Always try to see things from as many points of view as possible. Sign off, Tyler. History Downloaded Rome Rome was a place, but it was also an idea. It was not only Rome itself that grew from a few villages to a magnificent city. The idea of Rome, the Roman way of life, spread out to the furthest points of the known world. Though these places would become Roman, they were not Rome. There was only one Rome and for many centuries it was the capital of the world. So in order to rule, Rome had to keep a very powerful army. Yet the strange thing is, for many centuries Rome had no overall leader. So who made all the decisions? It was the people themselves. Romans voted for their leaders, called the Assembly and the Senate. The idea that the people were in charge was very important to the Romans. So when an army leader called Julius Caesar became too powerful, the Senate became worried. They decided that the only way to stop Caesar was to assassinate him. So on March 15, 44 BC, more than 60 senators waited for Caesar at the Senate, with daggers hidden beneath their togas, ready to kill him. <laughs> 